Okay guys, welcome to chapter 4, The Legend of Dragoon. This area, uh oh. This area is another contact area. So you actually have to come in contact with an enemy. So these little sand whales that are jumping up. There are some fly things that kind of chase you around. And then there are some cactuses that uh, are just kind of sitting there. So if you run into them, you have to fight a couple of them. I am trying to avoid fights for this one little part here. Good, and I found it. Uh, you can't go back, and there's nowhere to buy items. So if you end up in a situation where you're struggling to heal, you're going to have a rough time. I mean, you can obviously guard, but... You know, it is what it is. But there are some, uh, there are some oasises, oases, oasises, I don't know. Either way, uh, that you fully heal. Blossom Storm! So they're free healing spots, so I try to avoid battles until I find them. So this is easily the best place to train in the entire game and I'll show you why right now. I'm not going to move and it took 4 seconds to get into another battle. No running around required. The enemies are consistently spawning, so you don't have to worry about killing all the guys on the screen. And you'll never fight more than two enemies at a time. See, like, that wouldn't have even taken four seconds. I literally had to move out of the way, like, right as that happened.
so I haven't done it yet, but I will in a couple seconds. Those uh, sand pits there, when you go down them, they drop you into the level below. Um, the significance of this is that sometimes you can land in an area where there's an item. So yeah, see how I can't get back up there? It's like that for a few items actually, there's, there's one in the middle there too. I'm not quite sure how to get to that one. I haven't gone through the desert in a long time. I was actually really happy I found this part right here as quickly as I did. I guess I should fight one of those flying guys. Oh, screwed up. interesting timbit is these uh, sandworms and those flying guys don't ever uh, counterattack, but the enemies that they sometimes come with will. So anytime you get attacked by a sandworm on the map, you will fight a sandworm. Sometimes you'll fight a spiky beetle too. And it's the same way with those flying guys. Sometimes they'll be by themselves. 
Other times, they'll have someone else too. I think they have a scorpion guy with them. But these sandworm guys, especially for the girls, like Miranda, you can get a ton of SP. And for Maru, you can level up both her additions and SP. They can get three or four hits on these guys. Blossom Storm. So either you put those two together or you put somebody else that you haven't used in a while. For me, it'd be Hashel. So like a Hashel and Maru kind of thing, they'd be hitting them pretty frequently. I'm going to start using these items, don't worry. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. I was gonna let Miranda just keep hitting this guy, but now that he's confused, he might run away, and I might as well just finish him. Apparently I went, I went the wrong way, so... The other nice thing too is anytime you fall down one of the holes you end up in the underground. When you pop out of the underground and there's no battles down there, you pop out in your healing spot. And it's like that in the next area too. There's another uh, healing area and an entire oh crap new underground network as well.
So basically my game plan right now is just to get out of here. Um, I am missing some items, I know that. I got the Gladius, which is one of the bigger ones that I wanted to get, because it's Rose's uh, last weapon before the very, very end of the game. And I think I just got out. Yeah, beautiful. And the other was to get the power down, because it can be pretty useful. So hopefully without spoiling too much I will tell you that I will get an opportunity to uh, like I'll get some transport later on in about three new more areas and I'll be able to come back to this area and I will come back and do some uh, a little bit of grinding. The reason I'm not staying right now is for two reasons. One. Maru needs a few more additions to make it worthwhile, and two, um, Kongol doesn't have his Dragoon Spirit yet, and that's my fault. I should have went back and bought it, but I figured, uh, I figured, you know what, I'm not using him. I'm, I'm, the only reason I'm even training him at all is just for the sake of completionism. And I even debated that. I figured a complete run would be all optional bosses, and that's it. But I think I will end up leveling up all the additions. I can get that again anytime I want. So there's three Stardust here, which will bring our grand total to 49. Oh, and the other reason I didn't want to do any training right now is I wanted to get some better weapons and equipment here. There's two. reasons why I'm not buying this sword. One, I don't need the extra SP, and two, obviously, as long as I keep the therapy ring on, I don't need another sword. So, I'm not buying this for Hashel. I could, because he's really only going to get trained in the desert, and to, to be honest with you, like, there's no thunder-based monsters, but if you ever try using him outside of the desert, anytime you run into a thunder-based monster, you're going to be screwed. It's different for other characters because they have advantages, like elemental advantages, Thunder doesn't. 
you can never do more damage with a thunder attack. You can only do less damage against another thunder enemy, so... Wingleys believe in two things, magical stats and evasion. Both of which are characterized quite well by Lloyd, now that I think of it. I'm not going to buy this now, I may later on. I am going to buy the Magical Greaves for everybody except for, I think, Rose. the one thing it doesn't actually tell you in the description is that uh, everybody gets a boost of 10 speed with the magical greaves on it just tells you that your uh, evasion evasions I should say are gonna go up Miranda is getting 50% more SP and while I'm going through so oh yeah I guess I should give Rose the glad I don't need to avoid instant death nearly as much as I do need to avoid confusion bewitchment that stuff so give her the Giganto ring here, finally. I guess I should save. Alright, and there is the third one. We are one short of the 50. This is a good story, so I'm going to let you listen to it. Or I guess read about it.
last part was significant, I'll tell you why in a second. So if you guys remember back uh, right before we went to fight Lloyd, I tried to take another warp path that it wouldn't let me because I had to go save the queen. That path leads to uh, Foss there. Faust or however you want to say his name. I call him Magician Faust. Anyways, uh, an apparition would have appeared and stopped you from entering. That's what the appari that's what that guy was talking about is the apparition. So I need a vanishing stone to go any further there. Wow. 
Okay, so I'm just going to tell you guys right now, we have to go back through the home of Giganto, back through the Valley of Corrupted Gravity, back through the Barrens, to Flets. So, I'm going to stop now. Like, I'll stop the video right now, and I will start the next video when I actually get to Flets, because there is no point in showing you you know all these areas for the third time and I think this is like the sixth time we're going through the barrens so I will see you guys when we get to flats